I had this car for 43 years now, and uh, I used to drive the, the 2.9 uh, for daily use to, to my work. Uh, that was early 80s. How did you find this car? Well, there is a really small announcement in, in Motorsport in March 1976. Space needed, and there was a 2.9 uh, streamlined coupe uh, for sale, together with a Bullnose Morris for it, the great grand prize of 1,800 pounds. And they were asking for letters, and my father wrote a letter. Well, there must be something wrong, zero missing, and that was a lot of people had sent checks for 1,800 pounds and expected to to get the car really, but. He only returned the letter to my dad. And that was in September, October. And then we went to Nigel Mann, who lived uh, between Chartres and Le Mans. And he was living in a nice chateau. And we went there, and the car was sitting outside in his driveway. <laughs> in period you didn't know that there were only five Touring Berlinettas 8Cs built. No, I only knew that 10 long chassis 2.9 Bs yes. were built. Because there was only the Fuzzy Yeah, Fuzzy, book. Uh, yeah, the first Fuzzy book was, uh, was there. And there was only one picture of 2.9 in, yes. which is the, the, the car previous to ours. Yours is, uh, has got some differences. It's, uh, yeah. The roof is more uh, thin and uh, there are some particularities. Can you yeah. please <laughs> tell us? Well, the car originally had very short running boards and which accent because they are stopping about six inches yes. before the, the rear wing, it, it accentuates the, the shape of the yes. rear wing. Uh, but otherwise, the the, the windscreen is the, the lowest of all the 2.9s. Yes. I think the, the roof line is a bit lower. Yes. And the, the spats of the rear wheels are, yes. uh, I think, the best looking of them all. The Alfa Romeos only built five cars like yeah, that. And they and, were all different. Ring. And they were all different. Yeah. So it's rarer than. Uh, yeah. than uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Could be. But yes. also, the, this was the fastest you could buy pre-war. Yes. It is more like the 250 GTO, but then pre-war. Absolutely. And there were no other cars which had twin blowers, a full racing engine with dry sump, uh, a gearbox uh, and, and diff yes. sitting at the rear with limited slip, fully independent suspension. You couldn't have bought a car with that spec, really, specification. The uh, walking uh, boards will yeah, come board. with the, uh, the, yes, will come with the car. Yeah. With many spare parts. Yeah. 
the, the old blocks. The, the car was running on the, the blocks that come now as a spare part, but there were some little cracks in it which are quite easy to repair. They are repaired, but they need some machining. And there you is... Almost, bi almost built a replica out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a low mileage thing. car. When you low add all the, the, the mileages and the, the odometer was reset sometime to zero. Yes. And we added up some 12 and a half, 12 and a half thousand kilometers. Oh, yes. But total is 65 thousand kilometers now did low mileage car yes and like Charles Howard uh, used to say you can never better the factory you can never better a low mileage car yes absolutely it did, which is important <laughs> I've been the, the guardian, uh, the custodian of the car for 43 years now and well I had it for more than half of my life and I had it for longer than half the car's life so it, I think that it, it's about time for a new custodian. Mm -hmm.